start the next one. When a web app accidentally divulges sensitive information or sensitive data, we refer to it as a sensitive data exposure. This is often data directly linked to customers, e.g. names, dates of births, financial information. But it could also be more technical information, such as a username and password. At more complex levels, this often involves techniques such as a man-in-the-middle attack, whereby the attacker would force user connections through a device which they control. They then take advantage of weak encryption on any transmitted data to gain access to the intercepted information, if the data is even encrypted in the first place. Of course, many examples are much simpler, and vulnerabilities can be found in web apps which can be exploited without any advanced networking knowledge. Indeed, in some cases, the sensitive data can be found directly on the web server itself. The web application in this box contains one such vulnerability. Deploy the machine, then read through the supporting material in the following tasks that once the boot has booted. Once the boot has boxed up. Once the box has booted up. So, so we've read that and deployed. So the common way to store large amounts of data in a format that is easily accessible from many locations at once is in a database. This is obviously perfect for someone like a web something like a web application, as there may be many users interacting with the website at any one time. Database engines usually follow the structured query language syntax, however alternative formats such as NoSQL are rising in popularity. In a production environment, it's common to see databases set up on dedicated servers running database services such as MySQL and MariaDB. However, databases can also be stored as files. These databases are referred to as flat file databases, and they're stored in a single file on the computer. This is much easier than setting up a full database server, and could be potentially a, could so and so could potentially be seen in smaller web applications. Accessing a database server is outwith the scope of today's task, so let's instead focus on flat file databases. As mentioned previously, flat file databases are stored as a file on the disk of a computer. Usually this could not be, would not be a problem for the web app, but what happens if the database is stored underneath the root directory of the website, i.e one of the files that a user connecting to the website is able to access. Well, we can download it and query it on our own machine. With full access to everything in the database, sensitive data exposure indeed. This is a big hint for the challenge, so let's briefly cover some of the syntax we would use to query a flat file database. The most common and simplest format of flat file database is the SQLite database. These can be interacted in the most programming languages and have a dedicated client for querying them on the command line. This is called SQLite 3 and is installed by default on Kali. Let's suppose that we have successfully managed to download a database. So, there we go. Oh, go away. so that's the file. We can see that the SQLite database is in the current folder. To access it, we use SQLite 3 in the database, and then that gives you a SQLite like contextual engine, like command line thing. Um, from here, we can see the tables in the database by using the dot tables command, and then you get customer table. At this point, we can dump all the data from the table. We won't necessarily know what each column means unless we look at the table information first. Let's use pragma table info customers to see the table information. And then we'll use select all from select star from customers to dump the information from the table. Okay, so what pragma is doing is getting like the column information, and then this is getting the row data. Uh, we can see from the table information that there are four columns, customer ID, customer name, credit card, password. You may notice that this matches up with the results. Take the first row, Joy, Paulson, credit card, and then hash of 
we've got there of oh, the password hash. Uh, we have the customer ID, customer name, credit card, and password. Yeah, okay. In the next task, we'll look at cracking this hash. In the previous task, we saw how a query to a SQLite database for sensitive data, we found a collection of password hashes, one for each user. In this task, we'll briefly cover how to crack these. When it comes to hash cracking, Kali comes pre-installed with various tools. If you know how to use these, then please feel free to do so. However, they are out with the scope of the material. Instead, we'll be using the online tool CrackStation. So open that in a new tab. Uh, this website is extremely good at cracking weak hashes. Uh, for more complicated hashes, we'll need more sophisticated tools. However, all of the crackable password hashes in today's challenge are weak MD5 hashes, which CrackStation will handle very nicely. When we navigate to the website, we're met with the following interface. Uh, let's try pasting the password hash for Joy Paulson, which we found in the previous task. Uh, if we solve the capture, then we can click the crash hashes function. So, so not a robot. Crack. So we get the hash, and the password is password. And that's the answer. Uh, we'll see that the hash was successfully broken and the user's password was password. It's worth noting that CrackStation works with using a massive word list. If the password is not in the word list, yeah, we haven't even used it yet. It's got another hour. Uh, if it's not in the word list, then CrackStation will not be able to break the hash. The challenge is guided, so if CrackStation fails to break a hash in today's box, you can assume that the hash has been specifically designed to not be crackable. Right, so what's it going to get us to do for the challenge? Now to put what you learn into practice, have a look around the web app. The developers left themselves a note indicating there is sensitive data in a specific directory. What is the name of the directory? That is a good question. What's the what's the link to the the thing that we're supposed to use? Because it didn't give us a URL or anything this time, so I'm assuming we'll just do that. Yeah. Welcome to Sense and Sensitivity. So, we just have a click around. What have we got? We got. Please contact us here. This is Gmail. Visa at Sense and Security. Login. source favicon orkney logins and the main route assets images <laughs> back button blank image to Folder unknown GIF. <laughs> We've got 
got an index there, so if we did slash assets. Alright, so there we go. So because they've got in um, they're indexing the files in this browser, we can see the folder structure by browsing to this folder. So we can see all the file contents and the web app DB. So this is going to be the slash assets. Yeah. Navigate to the directory you found in question one. What file stands out as being likely to contain sensitive data? Well, I'll give you a massive hint. <laughs> the database. Uh, use the supporting material to access the sensitive data. What is the password hash of the admin user? So, let's download this bad boy. Done it. Right, let's go terminal. So SQLite three. Uh, what was it called? Web app DB. Dot DB. So we've got sessions and users. So let's go side by side again. So we go back to page one. So if you remember, it said uh, pragma table name of table. So if we do pragma table underscore info to sessions first yeah, and close off the statement. So we've got session ID, user ID and expiry. If we do select all from sessions, it doesn't show anything. session so there's nothing there Let's just confirm yeah okay so there's no rows so we'll do the same for the other one so pragma uh, users and select all from users so we've got like an ID name hash and then a like a one if they're an admin. So admin Bob are both admins. I'm guessing that's what it's gonna get us to do, isn't it? So we'll crack this one, it'll go, no, this doesn't want it. Crap, let's just do them all. So, copy that one as well. And not a robot. Okay, so we've got admins, Bob's, but we couldn't get Alice's. So, so challenge. Uh, 
uh, use this pointer. So what is the password hash of the admin? So that was that. I jumped ahead of myself. I think you'll find that is the hash. Oh no, wait, I didn't copy it. Copy. Paste. There you go. Uh, crack the hash. What is the admin's plain text? It was QWERTY IP. Uh, when you log in as admin, what is the flag? So you go back into the web app, log in, admin, QWERTY IP. There we go. I can reset passwords now. So that Alice that we couldn't log into. Oh, we can just delete her. <laughs> delete. Grant admin as well. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's that one done. So 